tutorial we are going to learn the basics of HTML which is very important when we learn selenium so in this video this is the uh, combination of different topics so in this video you learn the basics of HTML what are the different web elements present on any web page so because we need to know like what is text box what is the radio button check boxes so these are the different web elements so we we'll learn in this video what are the different web elements we have and uh, we need to know like what is document object model dom we need to understand the dom structure as well when we uh, when we learn selenium so it's very important and there are different locators in selenium let's say we we want to locate uh, any web element using selenium locator so there are different locators like id name class name class etc so how to locate uh, web element using different locators so we'll learn in this particular video uh, css as well and then xpath xpath is very important and xpath access so these are the different topics i have uh, combined in this particular tutorial so you learn all these uh, stuff in this particular video so yeah so let's get started guys yeah hello everyone uh, welcome back to my youtube channel so guys uh, this is the topic for today so basics of uh, html for uh, selenium web driver so the question here is uh, why do we need to learn or uh, need to know about html right so let me take you to the uh, script which i have written in previous session so this is the script which I have uh, written in last session and uh, we have created this script on different browsers okay and as we all uh, know that Selenium automates web applications okay so take an example of this web application uh, orange HRM we have uh, uh, written a basic script basic flow okay and in a web page like this orange HRM login page whatever you see all uh, whatever contains you see on a web page all are web elements okay uh, which are designed using HTML okay so uh, these are all web elements whatever you can see like this is image and we have text box here uh, this is login button uh, this is a uh, uh, link okay and uh, and in HTML the uh, developer uses uh, tags okay to uh, describe the structure of web page okay tags different tags are have been used okay to construct this uh, username uh, password fields okay text bot box fields or you can say button or uh, this link they have used different tags okay so so to work with selenium web driver we need to interact with all these elements okay because you can see in this script we have interacted with uh, uh, this username field text box right this username so we used one locator called name another locator we have used id id here for button okay so we are not talking to, uh, talking about locators right now okay but we have to interact with to automate the application we have to interact with each and every web elements so that we can perform some actions okay so since this is developed in html so html tags have been used so we should know the basics of html ultimately we have to you know interact with uh, each and every web elements uh, for which uh, 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 very well then we can easily uh, locate the elements and it would be easy to find you know uh, using different locators we can easily locate them right so let me take you to the uh, view page source of this uh, orange hrm login page okay so like this is text box username okay so so here we have different tags like HTML tags. So we'll discuss in coming slides about all these tags. Okay. So just I want to show one thing. Here. 
here we have uh, input tag for text username okay so here we have different properties like name id okay so in our script we have used different properties like we have different these are different locators like name id uh, x path okay so we should know the basics like uh, what are the different tags have been used to construct that particular element okay we, and uh, uh, which one is parent tag what are their child okay and uh, what are their siblings so we should know all those tags so here uh, uh, for this input uh, for this text username okay for username field input tags uh, input tag is used okay similarly for uh, link we have anchor tag okay now let's uh, let's go back to the slide okay so html stands for uh, hypertext markup language and it describes the structure of a web page as we have discussed html consists of different elements okay it consists of different web elements and elements tell the browser how to display the contents okay how to display means the the structure of the uh, uh, structure of the uh, page is designed using html and uh, html provides the basic structure of websites so basic structure is designed using html or you can say a skeleton is uh, developed using html okay or is skeleton is constructed using html which is enhanced and modified by other technologies like css cascade style sheet so to provide some styles we knew we need css so css is used to control presentation formatting and layout to change the layout to change the format okay and present in a better way we need css and another technology is javascript so javascript is most well known as the scripting language for web pages uh, basically this is client side uh, scripting language and it is used to control the behavior of different web elements and is most well known as the scripting language for web pages okay let's go to the next slide so this is an example of html so here topmost we have doc type html okay and uh, this is the uh, topmost tag html and uh, uh, angular bracket so tag is represented using angular bracket uh, sorry angular angular bracket okay so here this is html and uh, this uh, this html ends here so this using slash uh, the HTML ends here, HTML tag. So head is the child of HTML. Another tag head. So head is the child of HTML, and title is the child of head. Head is the parent of title. Uh, similarly, we have uh, body tag. Okay, and body and head are the child uh, children of HTML. Okay and html is the grand uh, parent of title and inside body we have two more tags h1 and p h1 is for heading and p is for paragraph okay so these two are sorry body and uh, head are body and head are siblings okay and uh, this is the grandchild of html h1 and p are the grandchild of html tag so we'll discuss about all these tags in coming slides okay so this is html tags so html tags are element names surrounded by angle bracket angle brackets okay so two brackets tag name okay contains here we'll write our contents here and this is the end tag uh, tag name this is the ending of the tag so we use uh, forward slash here okay before putting the name and the doc type declaration represents the document type and helps a browser to display the web pages correctly okay and let's talk about html heading 
so html headings are defined with the h1 to h6 tags so we have six types of uh, headings uh, tags and paragraphs so html paragraphs are defined with the p tag uh, this is the paragraph so here we have p opening tag and this is closing tag html links so html links are defined with the anchor anchor tag anchor tag okay a tag as we have seen in uh, this uh, example of login page this is the uh, okay page view source and uh, using this anchor anchor tag this is the anchor tag okay and here it is closing tag and it has one more attribute uh, href okay so the link of that hyperlink oh sorry that link that anchor tag okay so take an example of this one here we have forget your password so this is the link so if you can see in, in this web page forget your password so link is given here right so if you click over here it will go to this particular link Re request password reset code particular page it will go so this is the page okay and uh, attributes allow you to customize the tag okay and are defined within the opening tag so always uh, attribute comes within the uh, opening tag and attributes are used to provide additional information about HTML element so basically uh, attributes uh, gives some more information about uh, HTML element okay HTML images so HTML images are defined with the image tag so if you can see here so here we have image tag okay and uh, this is the SRC is the is an attribute for this image image tag okay and uh, yeah uh, we have alt alt uh, to link because this image has uh, image has link okay so when we click on that particular image it should go to this automate automation testing insider.com okay and it has two more attributes width and height so we can have uh, multiple attributes as well in a single tag HTML buttons so HTML buttons are defined with the button tag okay and uh, HTML list so list uh, list means uh, 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 list are defined with your UL UL tag unordered list and ordered list we have two types of uh, list tags okay and uh, followed by list tag so you can see inside this these are list C C++ Java okay and these are unordered list unordered means uh, it will be displayed it will displayed using bullet points okay bullet or unordered in different order and ordered means uh, numbered order so we have OL list okay and the form element so the HTML form element defines a form that is used to collect user inputs okay the so form elements are different types of input elements so inside a form element we can have different input elements like text fields uh, checkbox radio button submit buttons and many more so probably we have here so here you can see form tag and these are the different uh, input tags inside this okay input tags are there uh, this is for submit button uh, this is for password text username so this is inside form tag okay uh, the input element so inside form we have we can have uh, input tag so the input element is the most important form element okay so the input element can be displayed in several ways depending on the type type attribute so here uh, input type is text input type is radio input type is submit so these are the different types of these are the attributes types right uh, takes radio or submit so here you can see uh, 
like see this is text type this input tag is uh, text here this is for text area right so that is what type is text uh, and you can see for button I guess ID is button login input type is submit type is submit submit means button like uh, when we click on that it should be submitted to and uh, perform some actions okay so that is submit type and uh, the select element another is select the select element defines a drop down list so if you can have drop down list here select options so here we have select uh, but uh, what is the tag? Uh, do we have select? Here we have drop down one second. Let me just inspect. Probably we can see through DOM. So here we have select tag. So probably let me search with uh, this select tag so here we have select tag okay so this will provide the drop downs and uh, yeah here uh, like this is drop down so we have uh, name cars so drop down name is cars and we have different car values like Volvo Saab Fiat and Audi okay so these are the different car names so next tag is div tag so the div tag defines a division or a section in an uh, HTML document uh, so we can see so many div tags right so these are defined uh, basically the div uh, uh, tag is to define the section particular section or division so the div element is often used as a container for other HTML elements to style them with CSS or to perform certain task with JavaScript so let me show you so at the top we have JavaScript right so this will be inside so this is not inside a div tag so here here you can see the div tag uh, these are some actions or you can say uh, some properties uh, background color height okay so you can see so many divs uh, to define this particular uh, uh this is for input type text okay for login success message id is this one okay so this is input type text so this is uh, about uh, div tag so these are all uh, different type of tags in html so this is very basic uh, tutorial for uh, html so going forward while working with uh, different web elements okay we'll discuss more tags uh, while inspecting the elements okay so going forward we'll talk about uh, in the next video we'll talk about different web elements on a web page and their properties like what are the different actions we can perform okay and, uh, and later on we'll talk about html dom in next session after that and later on we'll discuss different locators like id name we have discussed uh, some locators so we'll talk about uh, them in detail in coming days okay so thank you guys uh, for watching have a nice day bye bye hello everyone uh, welcome back to automation testing insider so guys in the last video we talked about uh, basic html and we have seen so many tags html tags and uh, we have seen uh, how uh, those tags have been used to uh, create web elements okay so this is the continuation of uh, that video so in this video we'll mainly discuss about uh, basic web elements uh, like link uh, button image so i have listed down uh, some basic web elements here and uh, uh, some we'll talk about some more uh, you know advanced web elements which are uh, developed using some ad uh, advanced web development techniques okay so this is the agenda for today and uh, why do we need uh, what is the i mean purpose to go about all these uh, things right web elements and all, and all. so the basic purpose is uh, we should know all these i mean behavior of uh, this kind of um, different web elements 
okay some advanced web elements so that uh, it would be easy for us uh, while working with selenium web driver right uh, until now, unless if you don't know like uh, or how it works and then uh, what are the different techniques have been used to develop these elements then it would be difficult for us to automate uh, using selenium web driver so this is the basic uh, idea behind this uh, to create this video okay so uh, i have created a simple web page first of all okay uh, this html page so let me open it so we'll talk about uh, different web elements some basic web elements i have listed down here okay so we'll see some basic web elements here and i'll take you to this uh, selenium easy website where you can uh, see so many uh, some some advanced uh, web elements as well okay so let's go go to this one first let's go through this first okay so this is text area so this is uh, one of the web elements okay uh, basic web elements so the text area elements define a multi line input field so in text area we, you can write multi line here okay uh, multi line comments you can add here and you can submit here so this is kind of uh, a web element where we can write multiple lines and then uh, we have text box so a text box is a rectangular uh, area on the screen where you can enter text it is a common user interface uh, user interface element found in many types of software programs so like en enter uh, first name last name you can use uh, a text box okay so it's it's uh, basically it's single line uh, uh, web element okay there you can enter so what are the different operations uh, you can perform use, uh, on text area and uh, text boxes okay so here you can clear it okay you can enter uh, whatever you want in text area here enter the first name okay and then clear it so these are some different operations uh, here we have radio button so a radio button is an element of graphical user interface which allows the user to select a single item from a predefined list of options so these are the list of options like take an example this is kind of question some question is there so we have yes option no option and other uh, this this should be uh, don't know something i'll change it later on so here uh, radio button this is the property of radio button so at a time you can select only one option okay so at least uh, radio buttons are often arranged in a group of at least two options so at least two options should be there and here we have a checkbox so a checkbox selection box this is also called selection box or tick box is, is a small interactive box that can uh, toggled by the user to indicate an affirmative or negative choice okay check boxes are used when more than one option may need to be checked so here if we want to check uh, multiple options then we can do through check boxes uh, this is input type of button if we click then we'll see one pop up so we should know how to handle this kind of things here we have image okay so this is an Im uh, image so if you right click here here you see some options like save image as uh, copy image okay and drop down so a drop down list abbreviated a uh, drop down also known as drop down menu a uh, drop down menu pull down list pick list these are different uh, uh, names okay uh, is a graphical control element similar to a list box that allows you to user to choose one value from a list so here we can select only one value and drop down okay at a time we can select only one so these are the different cars so you can select one by one and web table so this is web table so you can see web table so we have uh, name and salary columns here are uh, the name of the what you can say you can say employees okay jayan and john this is the salary okay and frames so if you right click here if you inspect this web element so you can see uh, you can see like uh, a row t body table body okay table see table tags uh, uh, tag is used to construct this web element okay and this is tr is for row okay a uh, table data for uh, 
cell value td you can see td like these two are td and this is this is the first row and this is the second row so uh, this is row tr means row this is row 1 okay and this is row 2 and uh, we have frames as well okay so let me just uh, inspect this frame so here i have used this is iframe iframe tag is there to so we have uh, uh, so here we have iframe tag okay and uh, so we need to see we have we are here right now and uh, we need uh, uh, we need to you know jump to this frame to perform some operations on it okay like uh, we need to click on this link and also we have different techniques to handle it so we'll tell you uh, when we start uh, 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 working with all these web elements in selenium web driver okay and here we have date picker so from here we can pick the dates like this we can select the dates this is auto complete and we have list box so here you can select multiple list items okay in a list box and you can submit it uh, okay and here we have combo box so combo bo box looks like this it's not typical combo box so combo box is the combination of uh, list box okay list box once again probably you may not uh, see that so here we have a combo box so combo no, combo box is the combination of uh, list box uh, text box and uh, drop down okay where we can uh, enter some value and uh, select the multiple options so this uh, selenium easy website here we have different type of web elements so you can practice different web elements okay so in the input forms we have a single form demo so you can see let me just uh, if you enter here welcome some message over here and click on show message so here you can see the entered text okay so this is very good website guys uh, you can practice selenium web driver here and uh, probably i'll show some demo while working with selenium web driver uh, we'll pick some web elements from here and then we'll automate it okay we'll use different website not only this but uh, this is one of the uh, website okay so two input fields here we have two input fields so suppose like this if we enter 12th 23 and get total so we got uh, 35 so we can validate this uh, functionality as well other uh, things check boxes already we have seen radio buttons so you can see check boxes again this is a single check box so you'll get the message here we have different options check all and uncheck all okay and we have select drop down list input uh, form and this is important ajax from submit let let's talk about jquery first single select search and select so what is jquery first of all okay so what we can say is jquery is an open source uh, javascript library okay and basically that simplifies uh, navigation of web applications so it's it's kind of uh, advanced technique advanced web development technique uh, which basically uh, simplifies dom manipulations okay and we'll talk about dom later on uh, html dom document object model so don't worry about that and we have uh, so let's see uh, uh, how it is developed using jquery here so drop down with search box okay so here we can search like India so this is developed using uh, jQuery okay and multi select so here we can select multiple state uh, sorry yeah multiple states US states okay 
Alaska, Arizona like that drop down with disabled values so here we get some disabled values so we need to really work uh, with this kind of web elements how to work with that uh, we need to understand okay and uh, here we have drop down with category related options so scripting language we have python php something like that we have different categories inside uh, this drop down okay so these are developed these are the web elements developed using jquery and we have uh, ajax so the full form of ajax is asynchronous uh, javascript and xml okay this is also new technique to create web elements in the web development we have this ajax as well so mainly we'll find so many issues while working with selenium web driver uh, with ajax uh, element okay so this is the ajax form so we'll enter name here test comment automation ajax so here you can see ajax is uh, uh, some uh, form submitted successfully okay so one round uh, progress is showing and then uh, we got this message form submitted successfully so this is handled using ajax and dead pickers we have bootstrap this is again a net advanced uh, uh, dead picker technique okay so here some uh, notes are given like future dates disabled days of week disabled sunday so these are the uh, this is developed using bootstrap this is again advanced uh, technique in the web development and date range example so sometimes we have to select like this so automatically the end date will be uh, displayed so we have to we have uh, we may see in this kind of uh, web elements as well and we have table different table table pagination pagination in the sense uh, in the down you can see first two three there are three pages okay so if we click on this second page so this will this arrow will come previous and next buttons so this previous if you click previous then it will come to first and that will be gone okay similarly when you go to the third and then next will be gone okay so again a uh, table data search this we can filter out uh, any of the rows from here this again uh, click the filter icon to activate column filters input so we need to click here and then from here we can filter it out okay and we have some other uh, advanced uh, web elements as well data what is this table sort and search demo and progress bar let's see this is developed using jquery again so jquery ui progress bar so if you click start download so it will show in percentage okay and what once it is done then it will show click below button to start download okay find download it so message is there okay and we have a bootstrap progress bar so if you click download so it will see the progress okay so these are the different web elements uh, available here in this uh, selenium easy.com so you can go through it javascript alerts so if you click some alert will come i am an alert box so like this okay drag and drop a dynamic data loading and charts demo list box uh, bootstrap list box jquery list box and data list filter so different type of web elements are there so i'll uh, share this link with you guys uh, in the description okay and if you come down one second uh, let's see navigate again here in this url so if you come down here 
navigate to this on www.telegameasy.com slash test slash and here you will see if you scroll down welcome to selenium easy demo uh, we have listed most of the components that are used by developers to build web applications okay so if you start practicing so here you can see this is for uh, uh, one second this is a basic example to start with selenium is for intermediate one second it's not showing yeah yeah it is showing basic basic here if you can see so these are the web elements for basic level simple form demo checkbox demo radio button demo okay javascript alerts so these are some basic web elements this is for intermediate okay input form validations so we'll automate one by one uh, one level to the other level okay I will progress slowly and the third is advanced advanced these are the some advanced uh, web elements and the last is completed so these are the different web elements guys uh, so going forward uh, we are going to automate uh, these uh, web elements using selenium web driver okay so I think we have covered all these and in the next video we'll talk about a very important topic that is HTML DOM uh, document object model which is very uh, very important because people might ask at the time of interview also and uh, to understand uh, to work with Selenium web driver this is very essential and very important so in the next we will talk about uh, DOM okay thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye hello everyone uh, welcome back to automation testing insider so guys in this video we'll talk about document object model that is DOM okay so this is the agenda for today so we'll discuss about what is document object model and we'll discuss how DOM is different than HTML okay and DOM tree we'll talk about DOM tree and we'll see some uh, JavaScript methods uh, which are which is being used to uh, manipulate DOM structure and we have advantages of DOM okay so before we proceed further so I have a few questions uh, okay related to DOM so is the HTML we write is the DOM okay so the answer is no uh, but the HTML you wrote is you write is passed by the browser and turned into the DOM okay so whatever we write HTML code that will be passed uh, to the browser by the browser and turn into the DOM is view page source is the DOM okay so in on any web page we have right click option and from there we have uh, view page source okay so is that uh, source page is the DOM so answer is no because uh, that view page source just shows you the HTML that makes up that page okay it is probably the exact HTML that you wrote okay then what is DOM okay so is the code in dev tools the DOM so answer is yes we can say that that is the visual representation of the DOM okay so let me just show you in the last video we have uh, seen one page which I have created HTML page so already I have opened here okay this page is all about all the elements all the basic web elements so let me just open the source code of that uh, web page open with HTML oh, sorry notepad so here uh, we have source code of that uh, particular HTML so this code so we have written the HTML code here to create that web page okay so this is also not DOM this source code is not the DOM we can't see this okay the second thing is is view page source so if you right click here we have an option called uh, view page source so just click on that so this is the view page source so it is similar to the source code uh, more or less okay and uh, the next thing is is the code in the dev tools uh, is the DOM <coughs> sorry so here we have uh, to inspect elements 
uh, in Selenium WebDriver we have an option inspect or you have develop dev tools like if you uh, press F12 then it will open so this is in proper tree structure okay so this we can say this is the DOM okay from here we can inspect any web elements okay and it will point on the cursor over here okay so from here we can uh, perform some operations uh, we use some locators and we can perform operations on this particular web elements and uh, yeah when is the DOM different than HTML okay then because it looks like HTML only right if you see all the attacks are like similar so what uh, when we can say that this is DOM okay so here I have one example so if there are mistakes in your HTML so that will be fixed by the browser for you okay so if you make any mistakes uh, in HTML code that will be fixed by the browser itself so let's say you have a table element in your uh, HTML and uh, leave out the required T body <coughs> the T body is required uh, this is required tag to create a web, web table okay so the browser will just insert the T body for you it will be there in the DOM so you will be able to find it with JavaScript and style it with CSS and even though it's not in your HTML so let me just uh, here we have a uh, web table as well okay so if you can see web table we have created one web table here in this page so let me just inspect this so let me just if you inspect this one so guys if you see we have t body here okay in the dom t body is here t body so whatever we have written inside a, a t body that will be displayed like this three rows and this is the header okay so if you can exp if you expand this also this is the header and this is the row and this is the second row james 5000 john 7000 and this name in salary is the table header okay so here we have t body now let me check here so let me just search with uh, table in the view page source so if you can see here we don't have t body here okay let's check in view source as well sorry uh, source code So here also you we don't have a T body okay so that is fixed by the browser or you can say by the DOM okay so why do we uh, need DOM right because to inspect elements we need DOM structure this proper structure and then we need to understand uh, how it looks and how we can navigate to particular element because this is very important when we work with Selenium web driver okay to write the uh, X path or to locate a particular element with different locators okay so regarding different locators we'll discuss in coming days okay in the next video uh, we'll talk about different locators and uh, usually in selenium when we work with selenium we used to get one uh, uh, basic uh, what you can say one exception that is called uh, still uh, exception uh, reference exception something still element reference exception okay so in that uh, uh, it says that the element is not attached with the dom okay so we need to understand this uh, tree of the dom okay dom tree to understand how we can navigate uh, to a particular element and how to write a how to locate that particular element okay so these the these are some definitions of uh, DOM document object model so when a web page is loaded a browser creates a tree objects tree of objects on web page is called document object model okay so as we have seen here so the these are the different objects tree tree of objects 
so that is called DOM so the DOM uh, document object model is an interface and that represents how you are how your HTML and XML documents are read by the browser okay so here we'll discuss about HTML only okay so that will decide uh, the uh, so basically DOM is an interface API's so it contains different API's okay so that will be you know uh, I mean it that represents how your HTML will be read by the browser so it allows a language JavaScript to manipulate uh, structure and style your website so we can manipulate DOM using JavaScript language after the browser reads your HTML document it creates a representational tree called the document object model and defines how the tree can be accessed okay how the tree can be accessed means this is how the tree is uh, properly structured here and suppose we want to move to any particular element then we can use this DOM and we can um, once again we can locate that particular element take an example of this James okay so here we have to navigate like this and properly we can locate this particular element the document object model is programming API for HTML and XML documents it defines the logical structure of documents and the way document is accessed and manipulated okay with the document object model programmers can create and build documents uh, navigate their structure and add modify or delete elements and contains anything found in the HTML or XML document can be accessed changed deleted or added using the document object model so what we can say is programmer used to programmer uh, used to have uh, this DOM so each page uh, each browser has its own DOM okay so accordingly browser uh, programmer uh, used to have uh, all these APIs and they can manipulate add or delete or modify uh, particular elements and contains okay so this is a typical DOM tree once again it is taking time yeah this is DOM tree so here we have a top we have doc type uh, in HTML document also we have seen in HTML code or uh, doc type that defines the document the version of HTML okay and then later we have HTML head tag so these are all nodes of this particular tree okay so in the next uh, slide we have definition of all like element node so an element as it exists in the DOM so any uh, these are all nodes HTML head okay meta title a root node the top node is the tree which is the key which in this case of HTML is the, always the HTML node okay so HTML node is the top or you can say root node child node a node directly inside another node for example image is child of section in the above example so here we have image where we have ima image so image is the child of section section tag or section node descendant node so a node anywhere inside another node so anywhere like this image is the descendant node okay because this is uh, once again image is child of section in the above example and it is also descendant because image is not a child of body image is not child of body directly so we can say this is descendant node parent node a node which has another node inside it for example body is the parent of a parent node of section in the above example body is the parent of body is the parent node of section in the above example so body is the parent of section and section is the child of body sibling nodes nodes that sit on the same level in the DOM tree for example image and P are siblings in the above example so you can see image and P these are at same level and here we have meta and title so these are siblings and we have text node a note containing a text uh, string so which contains 
probably title so this contains a simple dom example text okay so that is a text node okay so in the beginning uh, this is a note okay uh, in the beginning javascript and the dom were tightly intertwined but eventually they evolved into separate entities okay so the page contain is stored in the dom and may be accessed and manipulated via javascript so the that equation so that we may write this equation okay so earlier in the beginning uh, javascript and dom were uh, uh, one se single entity now they are separated okay separated in the sense uh, using javascript we can manipulate dom so we can write this equation like api so dom is an api right i mean uh, that uses some apis uh, methods okay some apis to call to manipulate or to perform some actions on dom so we used scripting like in javascript plus dom is equal to this api html apis so the dom was designed to be independent of any particular programming language okay and the dom is so no programming language uh, have been used okay so this is independent of any particular programming language because that will be uh, designed by the browser okay each browser has its own dom so the dom is an object oriented uh, representation of web page which can be modified with a scripting language such as javascript so we have already discussed this point so this is another example of a table okay uh, you can see we have table tag already we have discussed like this in our uh, web page okay so this is just in representation so html dom methods so we have different uh, uh, javascript methods by using those methods we can manipulate dom so we have uh, example we have a gate element by id so whenever we work with any uh, take an example of id locator i will discuss in coming days uh, the locators okay so when we work with id locator so internally that this method will be called get element by id this so that is very fastest uh, a locator okay so this internally this method will be called so these are the different methods so we have get elements by class name so just uh, for reference we should uh, know these methods okay and at last we have advantages by manipulating the dom you have infinite possibilities you can create applications that updates uh, update the data of the page without refreshing without needing a refresh so without refreshing the page we can update the data also you can create applications that are customized customizable by the user and then change the layout of the page without a refresh so you can drag move or delete elements so this is for a programmer perspective uh, this advantages okay so in the next video we'll talk about different locators in selenium web driver so guys this dom is very important so please go through it on the notes also so i'll uh, create a blog in my uh, website also okay i'll write a note okay and uh, this is also very important as far as uh, interview is concerned okay so thank you for watching uh, thank you bye bye hello everyone uh, welcome back to automation testing insider so friends in this video i'm going to talk about uh, selenium locators and their priorities okay so this is very important topic uh, and uh, this core of selenium so until unless if you don't know what are different locators and how to locate uh, uh, the web elements on a web page then it would be very difficult you know to automate any web pages okay so this is very important topic so this is the agenda for today so we'll talk about what are locators what are different types of locators uh, in selenium uh, locators priorities and we'll see uh, different locators with syntax and example 
in a class we'll talk about uh, how we can categorize uh, locators so what are locators okay so locators provide a way to access the html elements from a web page okay so in the previous video also we have seen um, how to there are what are the different types of web elements in a web page right so there are different type of web elements like we have uh, edit box checkbox radio buttons image hyperlinks so how to interact with them right so we need a medium or we need a way to access them so locators come in comes into the picture okay so using locators we can locate them we can interact with them and we can perform whatever actions we want to perform And locator types so selenium doesn't have any inbuilt capability or mechanism uh, to locate any ui elements on the web pages so in order to find ui elements on the web page uh, selenium has to has to take the help of locators so we have eight types of locators in selenium so we have id locator uh, name locator class name we have link text uh, partial link text tag name css selector and xpath So this is the priority uh, priorities of all the locators. Okay, so ID comes first because since ID is unique, so this is a very fast locator. Okay, this works very uh, fast. And second comes name. Third would be class name. Uh, fourth is link text. So if we have a hyperlink, then we can work with link text. Okay, and if link uh, uh, string is very lengthy that link uh, text is very lengthy then we can go for partial link text we have tag name the sixth one seventh is css selector and the last one is x path so let's discuss about uh, id id locator first okay so id locator is faster among all locators so if any web element has id as an attribute we must use id locator because since this is unique so i think we should go for id locator so no need to no need to check any other locators in that case so id should always be unique in web page so ideally it should be unique but sometimes might be uh, because of developers fault uh, id is not unique okay that's different case so id locator is faster because as it roots it calls document dot get element by id this is javascript method which is very much much optimized by many browsers even id helps in finding web elements uniquely as we have discussed okay so this is the syntax by dot id username so let me just show you so this is my web page from let's open any demo website so let's go with wordpress today so if we inspect this edit box okay this username field so here you can see id user login so this is id locator uh, i mean we can use this id to id to locate this particular element username okay in this case an example so driver dot find element by dot id username so guys i am not going to explain with the help of uh, any program today no coding today okay because any anyways uh, we have to discuss each and every locators with the help of program going forward so i'll explain each and every locators like uh, id name class name css selector x path we'll discuss in detail okay so i'm just giving some Uh, syntax and example over here okay so in this case driver is an object find element is a method by is an uh, by is a class id is a locator okay and username is value and what are the what is the advantage of this so each id is supposed to be unique so no chance of matching several elements so if, because since id is unique so we can go for it Okay, so they, it won't match any other web elements. 
and what is the disadvantage works well only on elements with fixed ids and not generated ones okay so if id is fixed then we can easily work with id locator unless um, uh, if it if it if it is not the dynamic one a uh, name locator so this is the second locator so name locator comes after id if any web element has not id attribute we can use name attribute if applicable so if you can see in this web page okay so here we have name log so we can use this name locator okay and this is the example this is the syntax by dot name and log example is driver dot find element by dot name log okay and what is the advantage works well with fixed list of similar elements so if you can share the same name so since this is not unique so it it is not very much recommended okay sometimes uh, you may find uh, uh, same elements with uh, different web elements with same name okay same with the class name as well so third locator is class name so class name locator comes after name if any web element has not id and name attribute we can use class name attribute if applicable so this is the syntax uh, by dot class name username and the syntax is sorry this is yeah this is uh, it is duplicated here example is driver dot find element by dot class name this is the username username value okay so this is how we can use so if you can see here we have one class attribute here so if you can use this input as class name okay but class but class name may be duplicated here because class name is used here and probably for this element as well password for password also the class name is input okay so we should be uh, very careful while using class name as well so same uh, like uh, name locator we have advantage and disadvantage and here comes the third and fourth sorry this is the fourth and fifth link text and partial link text locator so this link text locator works only on links hyperlinks right so it is called as link text locator partial link text so in some situation we may need to find links by by a portion of the text in a link text okay so i'll show you so here we have lost your password okay lost your password so we can use this link lost your password and uh, for partial like we can use lost your or you can use password and this question mark for partial link text so we can use this uh, string to locate using link text or partial link text so this is the syntax given will only select anchor elements so this is the advantage so it will it only works with uh, link uh, anchor elements okay useful when testing navigation so for navigating from one page to another page so for navigation purpose this is very good uh, what you can say uh, very good locator this is the disadvantage you have to know the text of the link before so you have to check the link uh, text of that particular hyperlink before working with this okay so if if you have a link is uh, string is very lengthy then you can use we, we can go for partial link text as well and here comes tag name locator so a tag name is a part of dom structure where every element on a web page is been defined by a tag like input tag button tag anchor tag etc okay is so each tag has multiple attributes like id name values class etc so we have different tags in a web page right so we have discussed in previous session so we can here we can use like a tag or input tag okay for username here we have input tag input tag so let me just show you so if you search with input so here we have found six elements one of six right 
so we should be very careful and uh, we need to customize this while working with uh, tag okay so also we can work with uh, you can also use the tag name locator in combination with attribute while using xpath or css selector so we can use this tag name while working with css selector or xpath as well in the combination of you know we using xpath or css selector so this is the advantage so disadvantage is in a simple basic scenario where an element is located just via tag it may lead to a lot of values being identified and may cause issues so suppose i want to uh, identify this using tag but the tag name is input but here we found six elements so this would be very uh, this will create the problem while automating this okay yeah css selector locator so css stands for cascading style sheets okay so by using css selectors we can find or select html elements on the basis of their id class or other attribute so it works with the combination of different like tag and id tag and class okay so css is faster and simpler than xpath particularly in case of i browser where xpath works very well very slowly so it is very good with to work with i using css selector okay so see, we can work with different combinations using C, uh, css so like we can use tag and id tag and class tag and attribute tag class and attribute together and at last in a tags in a text okay so css in selenium has an interesting feature of allowing partial string matching using using these uh, special characters okay so this is the example i have given so by dot css selector we can use like this input and hashtag in email so input is a tag okay and email is the id so these are the different example so anyways we are going to discuss css selector in detail uh, with the help of uh, web driver program so don't worry about that we'll automate uh, for uh, each and every scenarios here okay and what is the advantage so it is faster it also improves the performance since it is very fast so definitely it will improve the performance of the script execution time okay so it is very compatible across browsers so we can work with the uh, uh, css uh, for cross browser testing as well because sometimes what happens is uh, uh, if you find using xpath in one browser okay if you locate any particular element using xpath then it may not you know locate or it may not work in any other browser so css is best for i as xpath does not work in i always and this is the disadvantage writing css is not simpler than xpath okay so writing is little bit uh, difficult but uh, i'll explain in easy ways how to uh, work with css selector the next one is xpath locator so xml path so it is the slowest among all locators but it provides you reliable ways to locate web element uh, so this is very important xpath is also important since this is uh, slowest uh, i mean as you uh but uh, i mean it is if it is it is slow slowest but uh, it is very reliable okay so this is the syntax for uh, xpath okay so tag name and attribute value or uh, already we have uh, worked with this xpath earlier in our while writing for the first selenium web driver script so anyways i am i am going to discuss about xpath in detail okay uh, there are different methods uh, associated with xpath xpath that is called xpath axis so we'll use them so i'll create a separate video for that okay so this is the example uh, advantages allows very precise locators okay and disadvantages xpath engines are different in each browser hence make them inconsistent across browsers not every time but sometimes uh, this may happens okay 
so that means if you write xpath for your application in chrome browser it may not work on ie so sometimes it happens okay so this is about xpath locator and this is uh, locator categories so we can divide uh, locator can be locators can be classified into two categories structure based locators so locators that rely on the structure of the page to page find elements okay so these are the uh, structure based xpath and uh, css so these are totally depends on dom structure okay and these are the attributes based locators so locators that relies on the attributes of the elements to locate them okay like id name link css class name so these are the attribute based okay so these uh, these are the two ways we can categorize uh, locators and in the next video we'll talk about uh, id name and class name in detail okay with the help of selenium web driver program so thank you guys for watching this video uh, bye bye hello everyone uh, welcome back to automation testing center.com so guys uh, in the last video we talked about different locators uh, in selenium okay we talked about uh, different locators and their priorities okay so in this video mainly we'll discuss about uh, uh, how to work with these locators okay using a script how to locate the elements so mainly we'll discuss about id name class name link text partial link text and tag name today okay and regarding uh, css selector and xpath uh, we are going to discuss in separate videos okay in upcoming videos because those will take time uh, we have different strategy strategies to uh, construct xpath and css selector so we'll discuss about them in detail in coming videos okay so let's first concentrate on these locators today so i'll take you to eclipse so already we have created a project earlier so i'll just use that project okay so if you don't know how to create the project and how to create package and classes so you can watch my previous videos so here simply i'll create one uh, class So here I have created locators in Selenium demo. So simply I'll delete this. I'll create the uh, reference variable of uh, web driver uh, reference web interface. Okay. So I declared my web driver uh, driver here. So we have to import web driver from org.openqa.selenium okay so if you remember we have created a basic script using chrome driver uh, chrome browser so let me just open it because i need a couple of lines of code from here so instead of writing we can reuse this to save our time this is to launch the browser okay so here we have uh, set the property of chrome driver okay uh, using set property method and here using this line of code we are launching the browser by creating the object of chrome driver class and here this is a web driver command we maximizing the window of uh, window of the browser browser window and uh, uh, through get command we are navigating to this particular url launching the uh, this url so let's take uh, earlier we have taken uh, orange hrm application so let's take some other application this time so if you go to uh, my blog www.automationtestingsider.com uh, just go to demo website so here you can find so many uh, applications so here you can practice using selenium web driver so i'll take uh, this wordpress this time around so basically web wordpress is a blogging site so here you can publish your blogs okay so i'll take this link and i'll put it over here so the first locator is id locator
so on any web page if you have uh, if you right click so we have an option called uh, inspect so if you select that so this screen will come okay this is the dom so you can adjust according to your uh, interest okay so so let me just increase the font yeah i think this is fine now okay so another option you have is f12 on your keyboard if you press that again you will get the same option okay so here we have an in inspector this arrow key okay arrow button so select an element in the page page to inspect it so if you click over here and you can put cursor any of anywhere in the web page so take an example of this username field so if you select that so this uh, particular line will be highlighted in this dom okay like this so here we have id okay user underscore login so you can take this id uh, id to locate this particular element using id locator okay so uh, in ideal scenario uh, id is unique only okay so no need to find this whether it's duplicated or anything because id is unique in most of the cases okay but even if you want to you know search with this uh, user underscore login so you have an option control f press control f here okay so here you got three matches okay so let me just show you one more thing so here you'll get the search box if you press control f so here uh, find by string selector or x bar you can search anywhere in this dom so let me just search with this user dot login so this is uh not required okay so you can skip this one that's label actually and the second thing is this id so this is an attribute okay so we have uh, input tag here so these are the it attributes like type name id class uh, value size okay so one of the attributes is id so here we found three matches so the second one is this one and the third one is it's it's inside the javascript so this is also uh, not in our use so basically we have we found only one element using this id id locator okay so i just wanted to show you that uh, how you can search with this search box in dom so you can search with string x bar as i have discussed okay so let's use id locator in our script so how to start so we have reference variable of web driver driver dot find element so find element is a method okay so it returns a web element so here we have another class by dot id so these are the different methods associated with uh, inside by class okay so we have id so in this case we are going to use id locator so we have to use id method now here i'll put user underscore login okay now we are able to locate uh, locate this uh, particular element this text box now we have to perform some actions right ultimately ultimately we have to perform some operations on web objects right so in this case i have to pass the username here I want to pass the username so what we will do we have send keys method so here simply send keys and inside this uh, bracket I'll pass the uh, username as a string open source CMS so this is the username so same in case for uh, password but the ID will be changed for password so let's see again right click inspect so this time you got pwd sorry uh, id is user underscore pass so you can use this one here okay 
now the third thing is this button so let's inspect this again select this arrow inspector and uh, click on here so we'll get id as wp uh, hyphen submit so you can take this id <coughs> so in case of uh, password also the same open source CMS and here we have to delete this so we have uh, we locate the button as well okay now we are here we have to perform some operations so we want to perform click operation okay so when you click on login then you will be able to login into application so that's why I have uh, we have a comma uh, command call click Now let me just run this whether it will work or not so it's launching the browser maximizing it and navigating to that URL entering the username and password and click on login so successfully we are able to log in into this application so this is uh, id locator okay the next one is uh, name locator so let's comment on these lines now we'll use name locator to locate the application okay so let's let me just delete this so from here if you inspect it again so here we have name as log okay so again you if you want to search so control f you can just search with log so that is a string this is id not required so there are 11 matches so in most of the cases name is also unique but in some cases it's uh, it's common for uh, different web elements so basically log is also a unique name locator okay so let me just use uh, this locator by dot now we have name function string name so it has an argument I'll show you name you can see a string name so what is the name inside a quote, double quotes log so we have log here right name log and uh, what operation we are going to perform send keys again we'll enter open source cms same is for uh, password so we have pwd we'll put pwd and password is the same okay and third one is driver dot find element by dot we have name and for button what is the name locator wp hyphen submit and we'll click on that button so let's run it again let's use another command driver dot close so we'll close the browser at the end so let's run it so it's 
entering username and password clicking on uh, button and then we logged in and then just uh, close the browser at the end okay so this is how you can work with name locator you can locate the elements locate the elements using uh, name locator now let's talk about uh, class here class name okay so we have an attribute called class here okay so let me just look it again so we have called a uh, we have an attribute called class class and the value is input okay let's locate this again and here you can see class name is input so probably class name will be the same for different web elements okay so let me just uh, <coughs> search this input by by writing a string over here so we have six matches so this is one so this is one this is two so this is tagged so we don't worry about this so mainly we'll talk about the class uh, which, ha which has value as input okay so here there is a second and this is again input tag again input tag input tag input tag so we have two two web elements matching our class name as input okay so how to find that so let's uh, write so driver dot find element by dot we have class name class name function and here we'll use input input okay so guys uh, since we have multiple web elements matching with this input uh, class name okay so what we'll use we'll use find elements okay so we have another method called let me just show you driver dot find elements so this will return the list of web elements okay uh, in case of find element it uh, it returns only a single web element but in case of find elements it will return list of web elements so here simply i'll write by dot class name i'll put input here and let me just store this in list web element and we have to import this list as well from uh, java.aw sorry java.util class okay so we have just stored uh, these web elements finding uh, with class name okay so whatever web elements will get will store in a list of web elements okay so this is the reference variable list i have taken here okay so let's perform some operations or uh, suppose you want to find out the size of uh, like how many web elements present so how we can find so system dot out dot parallel and here you'll directly write list dot size we have method called size so this will give you the number of web elements matching with the uh, using class name so let me just run it i think it's, it should be 2 yeah 
so we got two web elements matching using class name input so generally we don't use uh, class name alone so either we use with uh, uh, xpath or uh, css selector so we're not using class name alone just i wanted to show you like how we can work with find elements method okay and how to locate the elements using class name what is the next uh, tag name let me just copy this and uh, i'll block this so we have another uh, tag called tag name okay so i'll just show you here i'll show you uh, using tag name okay so here we have input tag right input tag so how to search input tag in this dom right so we have double slash and input if you type input it will search all over the dom like how many uh, matches will be there so if you can see uh, using input tag we have six web elements so let me just uh, see this is the first this is this is the second this is the third this is the fourth fifth and sixth so we have six web elements matching using this input tag okay now let's use this tag name here y dot tag name so we have another method called tag name so here i'll use input okay uh, so in this case also let's see the size of uh, the web elements how many web elements present using tag name input okay so let's run it so you can see six web elements right we found six web elements here so using tag name input tag you found six web elements so generally using tag name also <coughs> you don't use it alone so you use with other attributes or uh, using C uh, xpath or uh, css selector so we'll discuss in detail about xpath and css selector so just i wanted to show you about uh, tag name also so we have a method called tag name so using any tag you can find out uh, on a web page like uh, what are the different i mean how many tags are present okay now we have uh, link text link text and partial link text another locate locator called uh, link text and partial link text okay so where so on this login page where we have link okay so we here we have lo lost our password and uh, this is back to open source <coughs> i'm sorry so here this is also a link okay so let's look at this uh, lost your password so right click inspect So here if you can see uh, lost your password this uh, string okay lost your password so let me just use that driver dot find element by dot so here we have method link text link text and simply we'll put this string this uh, lost your password because this is link text so this is the hyperlink and we have uh, text to of this link lost your password so completely we'll use this lost your password and i'll put it over here and let's click on that link 
so by clicking on this one lost your password so this screen should appear okay so it will ask for username so let's go back let's do that and let's uh, close this driver dot close let's put some wait here as well so we can see clearly three seconds wait so it will ask to throw declarations so let me just run this script launching the browser So it clicked on uh, lost your password and uh, that is screen appears okay so where it will ask for username so if you click over here it will, it will ask for username so this is screen appeared so successfully it clicked on this lost your password okay so this is how you can work with link text you can locate the element using link text link text okay now we have partial link text okay so instead of link text i'll use pi dot partial link text so in this case if you if you have link uh, text is very lengthy so you can take the some part of it like let's take this part password part password and question mark okay dot click sorry click let me run it again again it clicked on that lost your password and browser is closed so in case if your uh, link text is very lengthy then you can use partial link text method so this is another locator okay so today we'll talk about uh, id name class name link text partial link text and tag name and in upcoming videos we'll talk about css selector uh, probably if we'll start with xpath first and then css selector in upcoming uh, in upcoming videos okay so this is how you can work with locators you can locate the elements uh, using id name class name okay and generally uh, these four locators like class name link text partial link text tag name uh, we don't use alone we use with uh, other attributes or xpath okay so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing insider.com so please uh, subscribe my channel and uh, click on bell icon uh, so we'll get the notification for upcoming videos so this is the topic for today so we'll talk about what is uh, how to locate web elements using css selector okay so in the last video we talked about different locators like how to locate web element using uh, id uh, name class name link text partial link text uh, tag name so these are the different locators and these two locators are remaining css selector and xpath so we'll talk about CSS selector today and in the next video we'll talk about uh, XPath. Okay, so this is the agenda for today. So we'll talk about uh, what is CSS, uh, what is CSS selector and why CSS uh, selector are used to locate web elements. And we'll see the difference between XPath and CSS selector. And at last we'll see a demo uh, like what are the different ways to write CSS selector in Selenium web driver. Okay, so what is CSS? So CSS stands for cascading style sheets. Okay. So basically CSS provides some look and feel or you can say some styling or some formatting to the web page to change the look and feel of the web page. Okay. So CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on screen. So let me just give an example. So here I have created two uh, HTML files. Okay. So let me just open it in any browser so in Chrome browser. So first let's see uh, without CSS. So this is one sentence without CSS. So
so this page is without css right so this is page without css paragraph so let me just show you view page source so here you can see basic html without uh, css now let me open the uh, other one with css so here you can see the uh, color has been changed and uh, uh, the format is also uh, or you can say the font font size is also changed so if you can go to view page source so here we have used style uh, css right and we have color blue and font size 46 so this is how uh, we can provide uh, uh, css uh, in html okay to change the look and feel uh, for formatting or to change some styles uh, so this is how it looks this is the difference between css page and uh, uh, with and without right this is without css and this is with css and why css is used to locate the web element okay so to identify dynamic web elements on a web page so basically uh, we use xpath and css to identify dynamic web elements on a web page so what are dynamic web elements right so the dynamic elements uh, the attribute or you can say the values of the attributes uh, of dynamic elements are changing frequently uh, when we perform some actions right like take an example like refresh so the element might be uh, maybe changed uh, in the next uh, time right so so to handle such kind of uh, web elements we use either css or xpath what is css selector so css selectors are used to select the content you want to style so css selectors select html elements according to its id class type attributes etc so in uh, similar way uh, in web driver also to locate the element or to construct css selector uh, we used to have uh, id class type attributes and different other methods okay so i'll uh, will discuss about them in detail in coming slides so what is the difference between xpath and css selector so xpath engines are different in each browser okay so suppose you write xpath in chrome browser so that me that may be changed in other browser okay hence make them inconsistent so particularly in i browser i does not have a native xpath engine so this is the reason uh, so sometimes xpath may change in i browser and css is faster because it uses uh, uh, id name in those uh, look uh, attributes okay and internally it calls javascript methods so because of that it it is faster than xpath it also improves uh, the performance so since it is fast so performance it definitely will be increased and it is very compatible across browsers so if you write css selector in one browser so it may it definitely it won't be changed in the uh, another browser it will never change okay so css selector will be the same across all the browsers writing css is not simpler than xpath so this is drawback of uh, css selector so it is uh, it is not sim simpler than xpath then what are the different ways to write a css selector in selenium web driver okay so we have uh, locate by id so we can locate the element by id in css selector and we can conf uh, we can use css in that case okay using id and we have located by class name we have located by name or attribute or we can use multiple attributes as well so match with prefix uh, the starting uh, characters or letters of any particular string or start with match with suffix or postfix or you can say ends with okay and we have at last uh, match with substring the part of uh, some part of a string or contains you can say contains okay so let's uh, see the demo using all these uh, methods like how to locate web element using css selector by all these uh, attributes or uh, some different methods so in my website we have different uh, 
applications if you navigate to www.automationtestinginsider.com and demo website so here we have different web applications so i'll take orange hrm application this time and uh, this is my eclipse so i'll create a new class here so if you don't know how to create project how to create a, a package and classes so please visit my previous videos CSS demo so I'll select public static void main I'll just copy the few lines of code to launch the browser so I have to change the URL so I'll take this orange HRM now let's look at the first method locate by id so we use symbol hash okay so syntax is tag hash id or hash id so let me just locate it so we have seen in the previous video so if you click if you right click and we have an option inspect so just click on that so dom tree will appear and uh, another another uh, option is uh, on your keyboard f12 if you press f12 then it this will appear so here we have an inspe inspector now i'm inspecting this username okay so this particular line will be highlighted this one now let me just uh, select it and do control f so this search box will appear find by string selector or xpath okay now let's do the first thing locate by id so tag name and hash id so what is the id here text username just copy it and we have input tag right we have input tag here so i'll write input so it will search based on input how many elements are there how many nodes 15 nodes are there so we need to uh, uh, look at the unique right unique uh, node so how to do that we have hash so this is the syntax right tag name and hash and id so what is the id username so you can see we found one of one one element so this is how we can work with id so this is the way to locate the element using id in css selector so i can use this css in my script so let me just do that driver driver dot find element and in by class we have css selector here i'll use that css selector and since that is username field so we'll we have method called send keys so here we'll provide our username let me just show you how how we can run this and uh, how it will work So browser is launched so this is the first time uh, some first time so it may take time so as you can see it typed uh, admin over here so this is perfectly fine okay So here we have used CSS selector method and in that in double quotes we have given uh, our, uh, whatever CSS we have found out right using ID 
so this is the syntax of uh, locate by id uh, we have tag name hash id now what is the next locate by class name so here we have dot operator using symbol dot so tag dot class name so let me just uh, first close this and try with dot operator so here we don't have class so let's look for button so this is this line is highlighted okay control f so in put dot button class name is button so you can see we got one of one so we can use this one this css selector so this is how we can locate using class name so this is the second type and uh, the third is locate by name or attribute so there are four types uh, inside that we can use name or attribute so let me just uh, this one one second let me just delete this first so here we have name uh, text username so this is the syntax tag name attribute name is equal to value so what is the tag name input square bracket what is the attribute name is equal to text username so this will work so here you can see one of one so this is the first type tag name attribute is equal to value so here if you don't provide uh, uh, codes also it will work okay if you provide code that will also work what is the next attribute name is equal to value uh, this is optional if you don't provide input also it will search but uh, this is good practice so because it will start from that tag so always write uh, tag and then attribute is equal to value so this is the second type this is how we can write also third is tag name attribute is equal to value tag name attribute name is equal to value one this is the second attribute attribute name one i should write like one and this is attribute name is equal to two or I would say attribute 2 attribute 1 this is also 1 and 2 1 and 2 so let's talk about this one third one tag name attribute 1 is equal to value so just copy this here we have used one attribute now use another attribute what is the another attribute id so here we can use id or you can use type which is different type is equal to text text so here you can see one of one so we found one element using this locator okay username now what do you mean by this one if you use uh, two attributes so that means end condition so this is if you don't provide anything over here so that means and condition so it it should satisfy this one name should be text username and type uh, should be text so let me just change text to some other uh, text other value right so text one it is not fetching any record zero of zero so that's why it is it's like uh, end operator here and but uh, no need to write this and here automatically it will take okay so the next one is if we use comma that means or so let me just show you so here you can see zero of zero now let me just put comma here so it will fetch this record because it finds the record based on this name so let me just change here as well name one if you change here to text so you can see one of two because uh, this one is uh, we don't have any element using this uh, name 
text user name one but we have element using type is equal to text two elements we have so if i click one this is one and this is second one at top of the uh, this page okay so this is how we can work with locate by name uh, or attribute okay and the next one is match with prefix or start with so we have we can use symbol uh, this uh, exponential operator okay so let me just show you so in this example itself i'll show you so prefix means the record based on the prefix so take an example of this one so let me just delete this username from here and if if you can see how many records two of two so these two records like username field and password fields we found using this name which starts with txt right you can see txt username and txt password okay and if you want unique record then what you can do username you can write a complete text username like that or you just write some part of it so that we can get unique element so if you write like text you so i got this one because the the initial part is txt u TX, text username okay so here we have given like txt u so that means we'll get only one record so match with suffix or ends with uh, so here we use symbol dollar so in the same example let me just give this dollar symbol and uh, what is the end name okay so if you give name at the end okay so find a string which which ends with name so here we found one one element which ends with name like you can see this username okay uh, what about the password password has uh, yeah password has different uh, word so if i put word over here so it should point that element so we found one of one so you can uh, change the attribute here so take an example of id you can use id as well okay so here also we got one element one of one so ultimately our goal is to find unique element okay on the web page so that we can perform operations on that particular element right so this is the syntax for uh, syntax everything i have given here like for match with prefix this this is a syntax an example also i have given and match with suffix or ends with so here also i have given the example and let's see the last one match with substring or contains so some part of a string should be uh, we can search with this operator using symbol asterisk so i'll use asterisk over here and you can see one of one I, of, uh, we found so some part of the string we have searched okay so if you write here txt txt or let's just search with uh, uh, what you can search let's look at this one so here we have class or let's see id id we have login so if i write like login so you can see we got uh, we got two elements right <coughs> two matching nodes one is this one login button and what is the next one press enter this one uh, here at down we have another login button so that has also id what is id open id login okay so if i if i want to locate this one so here we can give button login btn or simply btn also should work i guess like this some part of string so that means contains uh, match with substring or contains 
so some part of string should uh, be there when you use when we use this symbol okay so this is how we can work with uh, this uh, method so let me just if we don't have id or name or any other attributes right so let me just uh, search for that this image there is a lengthy attributes here so let's talk about this one we have an attribute overflow is equal to visible so let me just write overflow and visible it should start with image image so here you can see i am able to find one of one so complete this part is selected located right so this is how we can work with css selector so it's very uh, interesting when you start uh, using css selector and easy also so let me just recap uh, so these are the different ways to locate the element using sele css selectors locate by id locate by class name and don't forget to remember these uh, uh, symbols okay so locate by id we use hash locate by class name we use uh, dot operator okay in a similar way we have uh, uh, other symbols as well uh, this exponential with uh, prefix a dollar with suffix and this is star uh, star with substring or contains so in the next video we'll talk about how to identify element using xpar so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello everyone welcome back to automation testing insider.com so in in previous video we talked about a css selector which is one of the locators in selenium and today we'll discuss about xpath so this is uh, one more locators in selenium okay and uh, to identify dynamic web elements on ui so regarding the dynamic web elements we have discussed in previous session and uh, this is also a powerful uh, locator in selenium which is mostly used so this is the agenda for today so we'll talk about what is xpath uh, different types of xpath and uh, basic xpath techniques and regarding this xpath access we'll discuss in next video so i have divided this into two parts xpath uh, tutorials this is the first part so we'll talk about these three points in this video and in the next video we'll talk about xpath access uh, where we'll discuss some advanced techniques to handle uh, UI elements. So, what is XPath? So, XPath is XML path language which is used to traverse through the XML file and finding the desired information on uh, with a web elements, right? On the web page using XML path expression. So, basically, this XML uh, the XPath is XML path language which is used to traverse XML files. Since the structure of HTML is similar to uh, HTML is similar to XML, so we can use XPath language even to traverse through HTML tags and get the desired information. So to get the desired information is nothing but to locate the element on a UI. XPath expressions are the one of the locator types that can be used for locating the UI elements on web pages. So this is typical information or you can say definition of XPath. So what is the syntax of XPath? So we have this double slash and tag name so it is starts with double slash why because uh, it can it will search anywhere in the dom in the html dom and you can find uh, element using this double slash and this tag name tag name could be your input tag and then div tag we have anchor tag we have uh, image tag so these are the different tags 
and in square bracket we have attribute so attribute could be your id name uh, type or uh, class and this is the corresponding value of that particular attribute okay so this is the syntax of xpath and what are the different types of xpath available so we have absolute xpath and we have relative xpath so what is absolute xpath so absolute xpath tries to locate the element from the root that is the complete path okay so it is starts from root node and the disadvantage of absolute xpath is that if there are any changes made in the path in between if there are changes made then the xpath gets failed definitely so it begins with single forward slash so this is an example of um, absolute xpath so here you can see it is starts with uh, this single slash forward slash and we have html this is the root node and it goes to body and then p and it finds one element which has id is equal to user123 okay so this is absolute xpath so what is relative xpath so unlike absolute xpath relative xpath tries to locate the element directly which directly search in the dom and instead of locating from root, root yes on the web page and it starts with double sh forward slash okay which means it can search the element anywhere at the dom so this is the uh, uh, syntax for this relative xpath so it starts with double slash we have p tag and uh, this similar to this i mean uh, example of this particular element okay so it directly says this element using this p tag double slash p tag and this id is equal to user one two three okay so let me just give a demo on this absolute and relative xpath so if you go to my uh, blog automation testing insider and navigate to this demo websites tab let me just open orange hrm So we have right click option we have uh, inspect so let me just in inspect this username so double slash input so the moment when i write input so there are 10 tags available using this input tag right so what is the syntax a tag name double slash tag name at the rate attribute is equal to value so let's see we are locating this username field so we have id txt username here so we can use id is equal to txt username so here you can see we found one of one element so this is uh, this xpath is very good we can use this okay so this is relative xpath So what about absolute xpath so i have added an add-on here so probably we'll discuss about that add-on uh, going forward okay we'll discuss about so we have a crow path add-on here so, so from here we have an option uh, four options so just click on the last one crow path is written over here so if you click that this screen will appear so basically uh, crow path is an add-on which auto generates different xpath like relative xpath absolute xpath css selector so here we have we have an option click to copy absolute xpath so just copy that so let me just put it over in this search box so here you can see we found one of one element so though we found one of one element but this xpath looks very lengthy okay so this is not reliable as well because it starts from root node uh, from beginning of the HTML DOM like uh, slash and then HTML1 body1 one, d1 one, like that so these are the different indexes so if any changes made in between okay if any index gets changed then definitely definitely this uh, X path gets failed okay so this is not reliable most of the cases we use a combination of absolute xpath and relative xpath so how we use so let me just show you so just click on this username not username let's talk about this login button so before this login element okay so we have another tag div tag so let's look at this div tag first at the rate 
id is equal to do login button so this an x path to locate this particular area right so uh, forget your password link also comes in the, under this but we want to locate this particular login button right so how to locate this so take an example this is very complex uh, ui element where uh, we are traversing one by one so we have reached till here div tag and i want to navigate to i want to locate this login button okay once again what happened input so we reached this point okay so it locates this login information login button right so this is how we can use the combination of uh, uh, absolute and relative x path so this is just an example okay to showcase you so because this is the relative x path and from here we are traversing through single slash what are the different uh, basic x path right so we have the first one using basic attributes like we have uh, id name class name so in the first example we have seen using id so let me just show you with some other so let's look at this password we have this input tag inside this let's use name this time and at the rate name is equal to so here you can see uh, with name attribute we found this one element so this is how we can use this uh, using basic attributes we can find the we can locate the element on ui basic attributes is nothing but id name class name etc and this is very important method contains contains is a method used in xpath expression it is used when the value of any attribute changes dynamically for example login information so take an example uh, this a uh, user id gets getting changed every time like take an example this id we have here one second let me just delete this and lock it again so we have text text username right id is text username so take an example this is getting changed every time like text username one two three like that so how to locate this so we can use contains uh, method so this is the syntax so double slash and we have asterisk why asterisk so as asterisk will uh, search anywhere in the dom and then square bracket we have contains method and uh, open the bracket and inside that we can write attribute and the value so what is the attribute we are going to use id at the rate id and uh, here if you are using the function so don't use the equal sign so here we'll use comma and then txt user name so take an example this is getting changed username one two three like that so here if you give text user also it will work because it contains uh, this user uh, text user okay though the id is text username but it will still give only one result okay so this is how we can use contains method we have using or and end operator as well so let's look at the or operator or operator first input at the rate id is equal to text username and we have or and we have name txt username name is also same so this is how we can use or operator so inside this square bracket we can use two attributes so here we have used id is equal to username or name is equal to text username so take an example if any of them gets changed like this name got changed okay but still we found one of one element because it satisfied this criteria 
ID is text username suppose ID gets changed and this is text username only so it still we found one of when one element so any of this I mean one of should satisfy the criteria if both gets changed then definitely we'll get zero of zero element so this is about or element or uh, operator and this, there is another way to use or operator so let me just show you input and we have at the rate id txt user name text the username so this is one x path and uh, here we can use pipeline operator to separate to x path okay so here we can write again input and at the rate id is equal to or we have already used id so we'll use name put text username so this is how we can use or a operator in another way so we have separated two x path over here okay basically two id uh, two attributes okay separated with pipeline operator so this is how it will work or operator uh, another one is and operator so how to write and operator so let's locate this password this time so double slash we have input and at the rate id is equal to text password and we can use and operator here and uh, at the rate let's use type so type is equal to password so in this and operator both the conditions should satisfy right so id should be text password and type should be password so if any of them gets changed like uh, password gets changed to password one so it will show zero of zero records so this is about and operator let's say change this uh, id so still it will give zero results so both should be uh, both should be satisfied in this and condition and the, there is another function start with function start with function finds the element whose attribute value changes or refresh on or any operation on the web page so this is about the starts with function so let's use start with function and curly bracket starts with and in bracket we'll use id what is the id txt password so here we'll we got one of one record so it starts with that that particular id should start with txt take an example like txt so if you write like txt so it found two elements because username also starts with the id of username starts with txt and for password also txt so to distinguish this we can write pass so here we found one element so it locates this password field okay so this is how we can use start with function and this very a common also uh, text function this is the fifth one so in this expression with text function we find the element with exact text match so let's locate this uh, forget your password link okay so how to locate this we have a double slash so this is the syntax input and text is equal to username so what is the tag we have and uh, text 
is equal to so here we go we got one record okay so this is the syntax input the tag name and the text is equal to username so here we have used text and uh, here just remember that we have to use a double uh, equal sign and uh, equal sign and we have to give the exact text over here so our exact text is forget your password so let me just change it uh, i have deleted this that question mark so it will show zero of zero so just remember that uh, this we should provide the exact text over here so this is about text uh, fun text okay so these are all uh, basic xpath so in the next video and uh, i will talk about uh, xpath access uh, where we will discuss xpath access uh, techniques like child following following sibling parent preceding and ancestor and we'll talk about some complex xpath going forward okay so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello everyone welcome back to automation testing insider.com so guys in the last video we talked about xpath basic xpath and uh, this is the second part of xpath series so in this video mainly we'll discuss about different type of xpath access like we have ancestor child descendant uh, following following sibling parent pa preceding and preceding siblings so these are different type of xpath access and uh, later on i'll uh, give an example of uh, uh, how would we handle a dynamic web element or you can say a complex web element okay first we'll see all these things so let's first talk about what are xpath access and then we'll see what are these uh, different xpath access okay so xpath access are used to find dynamic web elements so dynamic and i would say dynamic as well as uh, complex web elements and uh, xpath access is the concept which makes the xpath expressions powerful out of all the locators and that is by using xpath access we can traverse both forward as well as backward direction in the html dom okay so i'll show you how we can traverse uh, forward and backward and access method are used to find those elements which dynamically change or refresh or any other operations so there are few access methods so these are the methods which we have discussed different type of uh, different types of xpath access okay so let's talk about ancestor first so what is an ancestor right so ancestor selects any parent and grandparent of the current node a parent or grandparent or great great grandparent so let me just give an example so this is my blog from here if you navigate to this demo websites tab and uh, you can see so many dummy websites are here so let me just open this orange hrm so i'll right click over here inspect so this dom will appear so let me just find any node over here and from there we can uh, will traverse oh, as per the xpath axis okay so i'll select any particular node like we have div login form okay so i'll select this let's change the view of this uh, dom so here we have options so either you can shift it to the right side or left or at the bottom currently it it, it is in at the bottom okay so and this to uh, view this in the separate window so let's click on this so let's write the expert expert id is equal to this basic expert already we have seen in the previous video so here i am able to locate this particular element one of one so here you can see yeah this is the element which i have located now we'll use ancestor okay so ancestor so this is the syntax and double colon okay so here we have we used one slash and ancestor and there are uh, two times colon colon double colon and uh, if i put a stress over here then it will find all the elements so there are six elements right so let me just press enter and then we'll see what are those elements so this is the html is the first one and the second one is body the child of html or in other words i would say uh, 
uh, the pa uh, stimulus is the parent of body and this body body is the uh, parent of this div and this div wrapper is the parent of this div content okay so it will always select the parent parent and grandparent only as you can see so this is my current node so parent of this current node is this div and from here the parent of this div is this div so like that it selects only parent and grandparent of the current node okay so what is the usage right so let me just give an example so we are at this node now i want to select this one take an example we want to select this div login image so first we need to select this one so how we can traverse there div and put index one so we are able to select this div div login image container and then from here we can easily navigate to the the next div here next div what is the id so there are two elements if you see there are two elements of this uh, when we select slash div so we found two divs this div and this div so if you want a specific this div then what you can see what you can do that you can just uh, copy this id and you can paste it over here you can give this id is equal to div login image so here you can find only one of one okay so earlier we were at this one uh, id is equal to login div login form from here we traverse to this login the parent of this div login form and from here we navigated to this div so that we can uh, we can perform uh, operations on this particular element so this is how we can traverse backward and forward using ancestor okay so this is just an example so in the same way we use in the in the real application as well and what is the next we have child child selects all children elements of the current node okay so let me just select this div login this time and uh, here i'll put instead of ancestor i'll put child double colon and asterisk so here you can see it selects only the children of the current node so this is my current node div login and it selects there are two two, two children right div id is equal to div logo and div id this is another div id is div login image container so these are the two children of this current node and just remember it won't select the uh, children of this or you can say grandchildren it won't select the grandchildren okay now next is descendant so let's use this the same uh, attribute uh, same node and here i'll put descendant and we'll see the difference there are 93 elements if you can see 93 elements found so it will select all the elements uh, children grandchildren everything so descendant <coughs> sorry descendant lets you select uh, children and grandchildren of the current node so this is the difference between children uh, child and descendant so child selects only all the children elements of the current node whereas descendant selects all the children and grandchildren okay so this is the difference between child and descendant what is the next following following returns all in the document after the closing tag of current node following returns all in the document after the closing tag of current node so let's see let's put this over here and instead of this one we'll use following so here you can see so this is the first one okay so this is the this is the end of this div which we have selected div logo and from here it starts so it selects 115 elements so you can see one two three like this so it selects all the elements from this dom okay after the current node hope you understand this okay so it selects the all the elements after the current node so this is my current node so from here it starts 
div login image container and it will select all the elements so there are 115 tags are there following sibling so let's use following sibling here sibling so it selects only sibling so we have we don't have any sibling of this tag okay so this is the only sibling okay so there is no sibling so it won't select the children's and all so it will select only siblings so this at same level so it will select only this tag so this is about following sibling following sibling returns all the sibling after the closing tag of the current node okay what is parent parent returns the parent of the current node parent of the current node so what is the parent of this node let's see parent of let's see this one login image and here I'll use parent parent scroll up so we are at this node so it selects all the parent node sorry parent node of the current node right so this is the parent of this node this div login image container is the parent of this div login image and we are at this attribute at this level right so it will select the parent of this current node which is this one div login image container let me give some other example of this one mm. let's select uh, let's select this content now okay so here you can see it selects the only parent of this current node so parent of this current node is wrapper which has id is equal to wrapper so this tag so this is how we can work with parent preceding preceding returns all in the document before the current node all in the document before the current node so let's use any div over here let me just use this div logo and I'll use preceding so here you can see all the nodes after the parent node oh sorry current node before the current node so how many elements are there there are 27 so where is we are at here right and let me just put enter enter 22 23 24 25 and 26 26 and 27 so you can see this is my node right so it will select all the elements before the preceding returns all in the document before the current node so this is my current node div logo and it will select all the uh, elements before the current element as you can see preceding sibling returns all the sibling from before the current node all the sibling before the current node so let me just put sibling over here so there are no siblings for this one so let's see any other example which has sibling okay uh, we have seen earlier two div tags which so all the siblings before the let's take this one now we'll see it has only one sibling this social icons uh, one sibling right so it will select this sibling only so let me just take this footer now so here we got five siblings so you can see these are all at uh, these are all elements at one level right so it will select all the elements before this current node all the siblings before this current node you can see 
when I am pressing enter enter it will select all the elements of before this node I mean siblings of all the uh, all the siblings before the current node right and self returns the current node so there is no practical use of this we don't uh, really use I mean there is it will select the node itself so here you can see it selects the that uh, id is equal to footer that node that particular node itself so these are all uh, different xpath access now let's see a real time example like how we can use this xpath access in our real time projects right so let me just give an example web table would be a great example so probably will have some tables over here table pagination all the data are same so we will take some other yeah here we can uh, traverse so suppose you want to fetch the record any of the records let's say this office this one you want to select this particular office or this one or any any of the office okay so how would you select so let me inspect this one so for this person you want to select this office so how would you select let me just first change the view of this one at bottom so this is our problem like uh, suppose we want to select this office uh, column any of the value okay so how would you select that's a question so we have uh, option here so if we if it's inspect over here then this particular line will be highlighted element in the dom and we have right click here we have right click option from here we have copy option and then we can copy this x path let me just see like how it generates the uh, auto generate the uh, x path so this is the x path of this particular tokyo uh, this particular element right so this x path looks very lengthy right lengthy in the sense uh, this is not reliable like it selects the uh, second row it it presents in the second row and uh, third column td3 tr2 and then slash td3 uh, third column second row so if you go in this way if you use this xpath so it won't work uh, probably in the next time onwards right because this record may change afterwards if so, suppose we get some more records then probably this row will appear in the third or fourth or we don't know like where it will appear right so this xpath will never work so how would you write the xpath for this one suppose we want to locate this tokyo okay so let's write uh, the xpath for this one using xpath access so let me first uh, go to this uh, t head and then i'll traverse to t body and from there i'll select this name okay i'll go in this way first i'll select the header of the table and uh, table body and then i'll select this uh, name okay this name and from here i can easily find this tokyo so how to do this let let's do that so first is the t head we got this and what is the next we don't want any of the this column names right so we want so we can use here following following right so we have already discussed about following following returns all in the document after the closing tag of current node okay so we can use following and what we want we want a, a table body so that we can select all the i mean table body and from here where we want to what we want to fetch this name so how to fetch this name right so it's very easy from here we can uh, search with text 
and that particular name so here we'll give this name so here here you can see we have uh, successfully selected this particular garrett winters name this name of this uh, person okay and from here we want this uh, office name as tokyo so how would you select this tokyo we can use following sibling as well from here because this is the third uh, i mean this is at same level so we can use following sibling following sibling and uh, double colon what is td so this is the first this is the second third fourth okay so this is an example of following sibling here you can see following sibling returns all the sibling after the closing tag of the current node okay so closing tag of the this is my closing tag uh, we have selected till here okay so after that whatever uh, elements will come we can uh, at same level we can select all those right so these are all at same level so here we have uh, tokyo so and from here we can easily search with text right so what is it tokyo one second following sibling what is the problem oh sorry i forgot this yeah so successfully i have selected this tokyo right so this x path will always work let's let's see whether it will work for any other element or not okay so let me just copy this and suppose you want to uh, uh this san uh, san francisco right so just put it this and uh, san francisco so first we'll copy this uh username okay let me just this copy first this one and then inspect this so that we can copy this uh, name of the person one second yeah this one i'll put it over here and uh, what is the city so this is the city so here you can see we are successfully able to uh, select this san francisco okay so this is how we can work with uh, xpath access so this uh, xpath is very dynamic we can use it for any of the records to select office of the particular person okay so this is all about xpath access guys uh, so in the next video create uh, xpath techniques like how we can generate using crow path okay so we'll discuss about that so thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye